Hello guys, welcome to another free webinar with me. Uh, today's webinar is entitled uh, Milty, is it a good business to go into? Um, in case you're new here, let me just introduce myself real quick. My name is RP Argonza. I am a business consultant slash strategist. And uh, through my workshops, I'm very proud to say that uh, I've helped thousands of entrepreneurs start their own businesses and build their own brands. Um, this in this is my business webinar series. Now, what I do here is I basically go into different businesses, different um, industries, where so that you guys, uh, my viewers, can look into these businesses and you know learn more about them. Just in case this is the business that you want to go into. Okay, so this is about one hour to about an hour and a half with dedicated time for Q&A. So if you have questions, uh, have them ready now so that later during our Q&A period, you guys can ask them uh, in the comments. Natin. Okay, um, I don't have a name for this business webinar series yet. So if you guys have any suggestions, please put them in the comment section so that I can look at them and maybe, you know, one of them, eh, baka mamaya kayong makapili ng uh, pangalan ng show na to, eh, eh, I'll be very grateful. Okay, so in today's webinar, um, the most requested business that we've had for the past two weeks, I'm not sure if you guys answered yung poll na ginawa ko a few days ago, um, we are going to look into the milky business. Okay, so today's topic, we're going to find out things uh, that that you guys want to know more about in this uh, in this business, again, in having a tea shop or in, in, in the milky business, things like how much capital does it normally take to open a tea shop? Um, is it hard to operate? How long do you usually hit ROI? And a lot more. Okay. Now, what I want to do with this seminar or with this webinar is I want it to be more real world type of uh, answers. So what I did or what I do, if possible, is I try and invite entrepreneurs na who are currently running their businesses in, in this particular topic. Uh, so that we can get we get to pick their brains about how does it really you know or what does it really take to run a business in this particular industry okay so for today I am very happy to, to announce that I was able to invite a uh, very successful tea shop owner all the way from Dumaguete Ms. Rachel Garupa of Artisan Dumaguete Artisan Handcrafted Beverages Okay, artisan handcrafted beverages, guys, is one of the most, one of the the top performing tea shops that I'm aware of. That is outside of the, of, of Manila. Okay, so yung sale in term in, in terms of sales, in terms of everything that they're doing, uh, because because this is one of the brands that I've been monitoring for quite some time now. In terms of their sales and everything, their reach, the the way that they're doing it in Dumaguete, I am very impressed with what they're doing so dahil dyan sila yung request ko uh, na sumali sa webinar natin today okay but before i bring her in to the webinar guys let me just get through a couple of points first so first let me answer the question now what is a milk tea shop okay so i'm not real sure a milk tea shop is a business that sells milk tea so it's a business that sells mainly milk tea drinks now if you're not aware of what a milk tea is it is um a, a drink that originated in taiwan and i'm not going to go into the specifics of the history and all that you can google most of that because for now what I'm, my goal is to talk to you guys about the business so we're going to go more into the business side of things but just a quick a quick background so again the milk tea is a drink that originated from taiwan and it's currently uh, the one of the fastest growing businesses that we have not only in the Philippines but in the entire world so a lot of people have been looking to go into this business and if the, and if uh, you are you guys are one of those people then you are in the right place okay now in connected to the milk tea industry one of the most uh, qu asked questions to me is why is it a good business to consider Okay, so the milk tea industry or the milk tea, uh, milk tea business is one of the best businesses to go into because of two main reasons. Okay, reason number one, I'm sorry, my phone is buzzing up. Let me just uh, silent that real quick. Ah, text. 
the texting community platform is hitting me up hi guys thank you very much for joining our webinar for today sa silent ko lang kayo ng onte kasi i think naririnig kayo rin sa ano natin okay but keep sending me those texts texts those those questions later on on our q and a i'm gonna answer them okay but let me answer this question first again why is it a good business to consider the milk tea shop or a milk tea shop why is it a good business to go into again there are two main reasons why this is one of the best businesses that you can consider especially if you are a first-time entrepreneur okay the first one is that it has a very low uh investment requirement the the initial investment that you require it is not that high okay but it has a very high possibility of re returns uh, let's say, for example, if you are to compare this, let's say, with a coffee shop, for you to be able to establish a decent coffee shop, you would need to have, at the very minimum, an espresso machine. Now, if you, you look into espresso machines before, then you would know na medyo may kamahala niyan. It's a bit pricey. Okay? In a tea shop, however, uh, you will be able to offer great tasting milk tea drinks without any super high-end equipment necessary okay you don't really have to invest too much in 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 uh, heavy machinery because the one of the best things about a milky business is that a normal kitchen would normally do the trick okay that's that's the first reason the second reason is it is highly addictive not not a lot of people talk about this enough they think that in the business uh, side of it i mean okay uh, but tea, obviously, it's 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 uh, you know it's uh, it has caffeine, and because of that, it is addictive in nature. Now, th this 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 drive that a lot of people now have to to fulfill their milk tea needs, no, uh, may look scientific, but from a business standpoint, that's something that you will be able to capitalize on. Okay, as a matter of fact, the milk tea business is. It's breaking down barriers. Eh? Uh, I, I talk about I talked about this when I when I uh, represented the Philippines in the in the Milk Tea Congress in Taiwan last year. Now, not a lot of people are realizing, pero it's it's hitting a whole new demographics. Now, not even coffee here in the Philippines, huh? not even coffee was able to hit. Okay, because think about it. Growing up, tayo no mga bata tayo, we were not allowed to drink coffee. Most of us, at least, di ba? When you were 15, 16, 17, uh, as early as 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, you wanted to drink coffee, pero your parents will not allow it. Why? Because somehow, masamaro yan para sa bata. But, but teenagers now, their number one drink is milk tea. Kasama pa yung mga magulang mo kapag mag milk tea kayo. It's also addictive, similar to coffee, but it, we are not uh, being stopped from, or our children is now, is now not being stopped from consuming this. So unlike coffee, na in a coffee shop setting, most of the time, ang market mo is, you know, from, from the young professionals upward, ang milk tea, medyo mas mababa ng onti yung start. Nandudong ka sa teenage years, pataas. So that's a whole new demographics na not even the coffee shop was able to enjoy. So for, from a business standpoint, that's actually something na, na napaaganda in the sense na, in the sense that uh, you have a wider reach in in terms of who you want to sell your products to, okay? So those are the two uh, main reasons why it is a good business to consider, especially here in the Philippines. Now, the next one is, uh, where can I learn more about the milk tea business in the Philippines? So I'm not sure how long you guys have been following me, but in my company, uh, in one of my companies, Argonza Trading, we actually have, and in Founders Cafe Incorporated, we actually have a milk tea business workshop. Now, it's going to sound self-serving, I know, but I'm going to say it anyway. I believe we have the best milk tea workshop in the Philippines today. Okay, because what we teach is, remember guys, I did, hindi ko to natutunan yesterday lang or last year, two years ago. I've been in the milk tea industry for more than 10 years. Okay, I was one of the very lucky few na nasakyan ng Milky Way from the very beginning. Everything, almost everything that I have today, you can trace back to Milky. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why uh, the Milky business is very dear to me. 
now that I that, that I do other workshops as well, we have coffee uh, business workshops. We have uh, the food industry business workshop. I, you guys know, I have my full restaurant workup, and um, the the marketing and all that. Uh, something that I, we will never ever replace will be our milk tea business workshop because again, I believe we have the best one in the Philippines today. Okay, but don't take my word for it. As soon as tapos na tong ECQ na to, you guys can visit us. Our our um, our consultancy is free. You can you can ask me all these questions direct. I can show you figures, literal figures from clients you now who's been with me for. 10 years why it's really good and our taste testing is free all that all you need to do is really drop by sa office namin and we do that now at founders cafe which is a workshop cafe in makati and i'm gonna talk about them um you know a little bit later okay now let me bring in our special guest for today so our guest for today guys is miss razel garupa again the owner of artisan handcrafted beverages so what we did this week or the past two weeks is we collated the top questions na nakuha namin from you guys and we're gonna ask them to miss Razel right now okay and if you have additional questions later like what i said we are going to dedicate uh additional time or we're going to dedicate a q a for this webinar so if you have additional questions later you can go ahead and ask them in the in the comment section and we'll try our best to give you guys the best answer okay so to to give you more information about her and her really amazing tea shop let me bring her in again guys well let's welcome miss razel garupa of artisan handcrafted beverages hello hi hi rp good afternoon Hi, good afternoon. Yon, guys, yung naririnig yung ingay sa likod niya, it's because until now, ECQ, they are still operational. And they are, if I'm not mistaken, I talked with you the other day, I think you guys are uh, averaging a little over, pwede ko bang sabihin? Can I, can I mention the numbers? Yes. Okay, I okay. think you are, you are averaging a little over 150k a week in terms of sales ngayon, right? Five-day operations lang, tama? Yes, that's true. Well, that's <laughs> so guys, again, here is Miss Razel Garupa, owner of Artisan Handcrafted Beverages. To give you guys an idea, they are crushing it right now. She's from Dumaguete. She has... Uh, how many branches na po ang, ano, ang uh, artisan right now? Currently, we have two branches. This is our main branch located at San Juan Street. The other one is at uh, Libertad Corner, Luxin Street, still here in Dumaguete City. Okay, they have two branches in Dumaguete. Congratulations. So, Ms. Razel, can you please uh, give our viewers a little background? Who is Razel Garupa? Hi guys, good afternoon. I'm Reza. I'm from Dumaguete City here in the province of Negros Oriental. You know, I love triathlon as a hobby. I love swimming, biking, and running. And repeat, in fact, I did four 70.3 Ironman races in Mactan Cebu and a few sprint triathlon and long distance triathlons in Subic Bay and Laia Batangas respectively, and a few more races uh, here in the province uh, in uh, Visayas region. You know, the love of triathlon has led me to my entrepreneurial journey towards artisan. Because, you know, every time I train, before I start training, I always drink my brewed tea, you know, to give me a bit of an energy boost. And after training, again, I'm drinking my tea with milk in it, for a recovery drink and um, that gave me an idea of why not open up my own milk tea shop and just offer a bit of flavors you no know, different flavors in it so that's how it all started wow wow <laughs> yeah Great story. so guys uh, again mm -hmm. see miss razel in case you didn't hear is actually an iron man finisher multiple finishes, multiple finishes right 
Yes. Uh, he is an Ironman multiple finisher. So uh, if there's something I know about the people who finish the Ironman triathlon, ako, nothing can bring them down. So ayon. And so so from from um, from your uh, love for uh, for uh, how how should I say it? Tri triathlete. Triathlon. Uh, I am a triathlete, and my love for triathlon. Your own business, and uh, that's the reason why you chose tea because of the healthy, healthy uh, factors in it. Absolutely. That's great. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Miss Rachel, how about you give us a, a brief idea, in a man, with regard to Artisan? How how did Artisan start? How long has it been in operation? And, and you know things that our viewers may want. Well, Artisan Handcrafted Beverages started March one of twenty seventeen. We are now in our third year of operation, and Congratulations. currently we have two branches. This is our main branch. Yes, our main branch located at Twenty One Street. Our second branch um, is located at Libertad Street, corner Loxin, both still here in Dumaguete in the province of Negros Oriental. Artisan Handcrafted Beverages offers top quality products, great customer service, and a great ambience also. And we also cater to everybody. While we're doing this, I'm oh. seeing, uh, what is that, food panda? Or is that, is that Lala yes. food? <laughs> Uh, food Panda, Food Panda writers, so, picking up their orders. Uh, uh, guys, in, in case you're wondering, the people that you will see go ng, ano, back and forth sa likuran ni Ms. Razel, uh, yeah. those are people picking up their orders and mga delivery ano, delivery services because they are still open. Even now, when I asked her, because they're very, very busy, so nung pinakiusapan ko sila to be my guest here, they told, ang una niyang question sa akin, gano'n ba katagal yan? Kasi medyo malakas ang benta namin. I don't know kung, kung uh, papano ko gagawin. So, buti na lang, tumama sa panahon na medyo kahit papano, hindi gano'n ka, ka, ano, ka, kadami ang umu-order. Kasi, if I'm not mistaken, when I, when I video called you the other day, Ms. Razel, sa sobrang, Sobrang gulo dyan, hindi kami maririnig. Ang lakas nung, ano, ang lakas nung shaky, pag-andar ng blender and all that. I'm really happy for your success. Congratulations. Sige, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Please continue. Please continue. Okay, um, artisan handcrafted beverages caters to everybody who just wants to chill and relax and enjoy your beverage. All right, that's great. Thank you very much. So, guys, if you want to know more about artisan, Please again have them ready later on. Uh, we're gonna, I know we're gonna have uh, time for Q and A. So if you, if you have any questions, get them ready now so that later you're ready to ask them. Okay. So now, Miss Razel, what we did here is we prepared ten questions for you. Uh, these questions are also from our viewers. We've been receiving them for the past two weeks uh, because I'm not sure if nakita mo pero I actually had the poll on my page if what business people wanted for me to. To go into next and they did request the milky business and this is the top 10 questions that we got and um can i start can i can i uh start asking you okay okay go, go ahead. So, the first question is what made you go into the milky industry so i i, I guess we heard this kanina it's a good mo but uh let's let's uh look into it a little bit more deeper why the milky industry why not maybe consider the coffee industry or yung juices like jamba juice and other stuff because those are also healthy alternatives then what drove you towards the milky industry miss Razor? well aside from the fact that i personally love tea you know i noticed that milk tea has shown an overwhelming demand in the growing beverage industry so that's it <laughs> Wow. Uh, from yes. my community platform, Ms. Razel, somebody texted me, John Mar, uh, from Cineman. Uh, the Artisan Handcrafted Beverages is my favorite tea shop there in Dumaguete. Good job for featuring them, Sir RP. Wow. So you have... Wow, thank you so much. You have... Uh, you have uh, uh, Ano na, mga luma, lumilitaw na papuri from... Uh, not even here, from the texting <laughs> from community. From Cineman? From Cineman University. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Oh, thank you. Man. Thank you. All right. So next question that is, how is it hard to operate a multi business? So, sige, ate. Uh, Miss Rachel, sorry. Give me, uh, give us an idea. Is it hard to operate a multi business? And on a daily basis, can you give us an idea what your normal um, normal route is? What you do on a daily basis, morning, afternoon, and evening, etc. Um, it's not really hard, but I would consider it very challenging. You know, on a day to day operation, you get to prepare to brew, to prepare the supplies, the inventory, the preparation, the, the, the shop, you get it ready for opening. So that's basically what we do from opening to closing. And you have to make sure that you serve really good quality products, you know, the product preparation, the, the supplies are also okay, you know, the inventory, and you have, you have also to look at your personnel. Ah, there you go. So guys, uh, just to summarize what uh, Ms. Razel said, it's not that hard, but it is challenging. There are a couple of, uh, like in any business, obviously there will be uh, areas that you need to make sure that you are an expert on. Remember, this is your business, whatever it is, maybe a tea shop, a coffee shop, whatever. All, all, of, the, all of the parts of it, you should be an expert in. Okay, because that's, that's really true. the only secret that there is when it comes to trying to make sure that a business becomes successful. Okay, thank you for that, Ms. Razel. Next question. Is it different to operate a tea shop in the province than it is in the Manila in Manila? Why? Wow, this is a very good question. So let me just repeat that. Okay. Is it different to operate a tea shop in the province than it is in Manila? Okay. Um, for me, we don't have a shop yet in Manila. But the only thing that I can think of would be the, the acquisition and the shipment of supplies. Because it would be easier if we're in Manila than here in the province. But other than that, I think there's no difference, difference at all. Because, you know, people now are... Um, are inclined, they, they know about milk tea already. It has dominated the, the country and even the whole world. Definitely, so. definitely, that's true. Okay, so there you go, guys. Um, so you're you're uh, referring to you're referring to the supply chain uh, as far as yes, yes, yes. the difference in the province, yeah. Because yes. the reason for that, guys, is because majority of the suppliers in this industry is located in Manila, here where I'm located right now. Um, and she is from Dumaguete, so that's that's her number one challenge. That's, that's the number one difference. Um, if I may add on to to that answer, to, yes. let me give an answer to that question also. Um, there is a, a little difference. In order na pumapaso, <laughs> is there is a little difference. Um, oh, sorry, not a little. There is a big difference in terms of running a tea shop in. In the province, not necessarily just Dumaguete, than it is here in the in, in Manila. Uh, but it's a case to case basis. One of the things, uh, whenever I try and set up brand in in the province, one of the things that I look into is what 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 a lot of people would call provincial pride. Some provinces they have they have the and, and sometimes it goes vice versa. Uh, some some provinces they have this thing where in when they know na a brand is made by a local who is somebody from there, they try or some of them eh, mas tinatangkilik yung brand na yon. They, they like to do business more with that brand. Some provinces have that mentality, which is a great one. Now, other provinces naman, they have the thing na if they find out it's from the city, they want to try that a little bit more. Okay, so depending on ano eh, depending on the kind of province that you're in. In Dumaguete, ba, Ms. Razor, what are what are people like? What are your customers like? Do they tend to patronize more uh, brands that are homegrown, or, or do they tend to gear more towards brands that came from either outside the country or from Manila or you know more known brands? I'm sorry, um, the, there's a problem with the connection. <laughs> Can you say it again? There you go. Let me, let me just 
Are you, are you able to hear me, Ms. Razel? Um, no, it's, it's a bit chatty. We're having technical so the last few lines. Yes. <laughs> so, sorry. Yeah, okay now? Is it okay now? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Okay, so let me, let me repeat that. Some Whenever I do, uh, whenever I make businesses in the province, one of the things that I look at is is the, um, their brand mentality. Some provinces, kasi, they have the mentality that if it's homegrown, they wanna they wanna patronize it more. Some some provinces, man, they tend to look at uh, brands that came from either Manila or outside the country as brands that they they wanna take advantage more of. In, in Dumaguete, how is it? Is, is it something uh, they people from Dumaguete tend to lean more towards a homegrown homegrown brand or must must nasusway ba sila ng brand name na when people say ah this is from Manila so this is better how is it there um here in Dumaguete i noticed that people love local brands they do ah. patronize local brands no Thank God. Uh, yes, yes. That's what I noticed. You know, a lot of tea shops opened up and they, they go try it. And when they love it, they kept on coming back. <laughs> wow, congratulations. That's great. So in Dumaguete, apparently yeah. people there uh, tend to patronize uh, homegrown brands more than, you know, outside brand, outsiders. And that's really nice. So guys, remember yeah. this. In, 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 in trying to establish your own brand, somehow recognizing this part of the of of uh, the psychological mindset or um sorry, what is this <laughs> i'm sorry how your consumers speak in your area will help you tremendously in terms of how to you know the question your market are you gonna are you gonna make it look like a, a real homegrown brand or are you gonna make it feel like a brand that's that's from the city so on and so forth so that is a good thing uh, to think about when you are looking to build your own uh, team back in the province. Okay. Next. Oh, not worth. So good, if you don't want to share the real number, you can give us an estimate. But the question is, how much capital did you spend to open your store? So originally, you even because I know when you open a business, sometimes the spending doesn't really stop. A lot of people think, uh, for example, if the capital I need right now is 500,000, believe me when I tell you, a few months after, you may need additional money uh, for your business. Sometimes that's how it works. For, for this question, maybe let's just talk about your initial investment, Ms. Razel. How much did it take you to open your store, your first store? Great. When I opened uh, this, this shop, I started with around 300,000 capital. Three hundred thousand. How big is your location? Yes. How uh, big is your location? Forty to fifty square meters. Forty to fifty square meters. That's what that's where she is in right now, guys. So what you're seeing behind her, that's her actual. That's the first brand, yeah. right? So that that's yes, yes. so that's three hundred thousand around three hundred thousand for a forty square meter space. Does that include the the renovation and the fixtures already um no not yet the renovation just the rent the overhead we have the signage and of course the um, the supplies and the very important equipment needed to start to start okay so you, what, what you're talking about is 300k bear uh basically it, it yes, doesn't yes. the renovation comes like renovation comes like after six months when we had uh, the funds. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a little bit confused, Miss Razel. When you said when you say uh, the initial investment is 300k and renovation came after six months after, what, what wh where was the original 300k in? Is it that store? Um, for the rental? No, this no. We just transferred here six months after we started operation. Ah, so that's for a different location. Okay. Yes. So, yes. The one adjacent to this shop. All right. So it's it's the same area, just a different location. Mm -hmm. uh, I see. And how around yes, how much location. can you give our viewers an idea? Around how much did it take to renovate your area? Around uh, one hundred thousand. 
Oh, only around 100,000. So all in all, you're looking at around 400,000 ish. 400,000, yes. Okay. So guys, the simple interior. Simple interior. Guys, if you're interested to know uh, what Artisan looks like, uh, you can uh, you can visit the or sorry if, if you're in Dumaguete you can visit them definitely but if you are not you can check out their Facebook page I'm gonna put the link down below or you can just search for them Artisan what's what's your uh, shop's handle Miss Razel Artisan Handcrafted Beverages so it's it's one word Artisan Handcrafted Beverages no no uh, three words. No, I mean, yeah, your Facebook handle, the at Artisan Handcrafted Beverages, or just at Artisan, Artisan Handcrafted Beverages. It's Handcrafted at Artisan Handcrafted Beverages. Beverages. So there you are, guys. I am, um, I am flashing their, their. Uh, so that's art at Artisan Handcrafted Beverages. I am there. You go, Uma, and there I am flashing their uh, handle. The, in the live right now. So if you guys want to visit their Facebook page, that is their handle name and you can you can uh, you can visit them to try and see how artisan looks like. Again, the answer uh, the question earlier is how much capital does it take or did it take to originally open your store? So you heard it from Miss Razel it took her originally 300,000 for her first store then she had to transfer over here which she had to inject another 100,000 pesos for interior i assume you transferred to a bigger place because it's it's getting your operations is getting wider and bigger is that what happened it's, it's, it's about the same it's about it's the about same the, okay mm, yeah Congratulations. there you go next next question is how long before you hit roi Okay, guys, for those who are not uh, aware, ROI means return of investment. So when you say hit ROI, that means you've already gotten the money you initially invested. So for example, in the example that uh, Ms. Grazel provided earlier, ROI would mean 400 back entirely. Okay, now, guys, remember this. When talking about ROI, it's not always about getting your money back okay because ROI happens in a lot of forms now people would say uh, ROI is kapag nakuha ko na lahat ng invest ko dyan, but that's not that's not exactly how business works sometimes you may not know it after two years hindi mo nakuha yung one million in invest mo but it has provided for your family for two years already that's some kind of an ROI. It really depends on how you would define the ROI. Okay, because it's really to get ROI in the sense that if you're not gonna spend anything, all the money that comes in, you're just gonna put it back in your bank. And yeah, obviously, ROI would be easy to put. However, if this business is also the one providing for your family, your needs, all of it, then uh, the definition of ROI changes a little bit in that scenario. Okay, so Miss Razo, if we can answer the question, how long before you hit your ROI? Um, it's about eighteen months. We hit eighteen ROI. months, so about a year and a half. Months. Yes. Wow, yes. there you go. So since so since eighteen we months, approximately twelve to eighteen months. So a year and a half to. To get your ROI, and you're about three years now, so 18 months of cash flow positive. Uh, another 18 months of cash flow positive. Yes. Wow, congratulations. So there you have it, guys. For for Artisan, it took her, uh, for Miss Razel of Artisan, it took them 18 months to get their ROI back. Okay, but so that means it's always been positive because money is returning and you are able to make up for that for that amount. Wow, that's that's great. Congratulations, Miss Razel. Thank you. Okay, now guys, again, remember, it will open your own different. Okay, but don't think that you open your own shop or if somebody here is watching with their own shop right now and they think, so you can eat in one thing, deep in a ROI, you have to hear, no, it doesn't work. Okay, ROI works a little bit different depending on uh, your particular situation. Okay, so if you want to learn more about that, uh, wait, 
we have a Q and A later. Uh, uh, make your question, ask it so that I can answer it for you later. Okay. Moving on, the next question that we have is: How many cups per day are you averaging right now? Wow, good question. So, uh, guys, let's consider the let's consider the question. The question is right now. So let me just let me just uh, point out the scenario. Currently, we are on ECQ. The majority is in ECQ. ECQ meaning we have to be in quarantine, which means a lot of people and the majority of your your customers right now, Miss uh, Razor, which are students, are not in school. So maybe you are just in uh, you are in Yes. Yes. Okay, so with that in mind, can you please tell our viewers how many cups are you averaging right now with just delivery? Um, given the current situation right now, you know, we are on an enhanced community quarantine. Thank God we are averaging from 350 to 400 cups every day. Wow, 350 to 400 cups? And that's no dine in, yeah. no, no dine in, that's just delivery. Uh, there are uh, people who, who came, you know, just for takeout. Take so out. pick up, pick up and delivery. Apart from the delivery, yes, apart from the food panda, there are also people who wants to buy for takeout only. 300 to 400 cups a day. <laughs> yes. Wow. Oh my, my God. <laughs> Guys, did you hear that? So right now, there it's flashing in your screens right now. During this PCQ, no students, no dining in just for pickup and delivery. They are averaging 300 to 400 cups per day. Oh my gosh, that is <laughs> such a great number. Um, I, 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 we have a question. A lot of you are probably asking, eh, "How much buffer cup?" Hindi ko na muna pangunahan yan kasi I, it's one of the questions that we can look at. So that's just my blowing right To give you perspective, my some of my top franchises, some of my clients who are now big franchises, that's already a number. That the, the, the have the 300 to 400 cups a day. That's a number that I can only see in big So for a small shop, a 40 square meter shop to do that, they're in in a Magete. That's just mind blowing. Congratulations, Ms. Brazil. Thank you so much. So, uh, let's, let's, <laughs> let's proceed. The next question is, parang gusto ko na talaman, gusto ko na pumunta rin sa pricing. But wait, guys, maghintay tayo. We do have a question about pricing. So, hold your horses. We'll get to it. The next question first is, what are your best-selling drinks? So, in Artisan, what are the drinks na talagang binibili ng mga tao? What are the drinks that people want when you say Artisan has well, our five, our top sellers really in our shop are the milk tea, you know, the classic milk tea, classic cheesecake, the dark chocolate, winter melon, Okinawa. Wow, so there you Those go. are our top five. A very, very similar din pala dito sa Manila. <laughs> Kasi the five drinks that you mentioned, those are, those are also the five best-selling drinks that we have here in Manila today. Okay, uh, let's not exactly in that order or or one or two of those can be switched depending on the area depending on the brand but majority of it the makeup of the drink that you mentioned that's 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 most of the time the the best selling drinks here also so uh again guys let me just repeat that so the best selling drinks that they have there in artisa dumaguete is the classic milk tea the did you say cheesecake or cream cheese cheesecake cheesecake classic cheesecake, cheesecake. Classic cheesecake. Uh, what's the other one? I'm sorry. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Winter, Winter melon. melon. And the Okinawa. Okinawa. Okay, okay. Yes. Great. Now, guys, in case you are wondering, are those the only flavors that we need to sell? No. Uh, for you to have, uh, for you to have uh, 
you know, for you to have a business that you'll be able to really say that you are a tea shop, a complete tea shop, you're going to need a little bit more flavor, a little bit more drinks with other flavors, okay? But those five flavors, in my opinion, those are flavors along with a few more other ones that if I'm going to add to them, you need to have taro also. It's it's sort of a it's sort of a staple in the milk tea industry. Taro. Then uh, currently right now, it's it's doing really really well. Cream cheese, milk tea also because cream cheese is different from cake, guys. So it's they have a little bit of difference. Um, and another one doing really well right now is the brown sugar series. So you you will see this either in milk, milk tea, or chocolate brown sugar. There are other there are other uh, variations of those uh but those are some of the flavors that you definitely need to have if you want to go to a uh, milky, milky store okay uh in, in my company one of the one of the flavors that we are really surprised that is working really well for a lot of our clients is a flavor called sapporo i'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it but sapporo is very similar to the brown sugar flavor it has it has a uh, brown sugar notes and uh it was supposed to be just a drink or just the flavor that we came out with for a uh, certain promo but then we had to ad adapt it because a lot of our clients started telling us that it became their best seller so watch out for that flavor also sapporo a lot of our clients have gone away or we have clients right not a lot but we have clients who have gone away with with Okinawa already, especially those who want to be different from the pack, didn't don't want to carry that flavor. What they do is they build their their strategy around the Sapporo drink. So you may want to consider looking into that also if you are looking at uh, making your own tea shop. But again, the five best flavors that we have in Dumaguete right now for Artisan is classic milk tea, cream cheese, uh, cheesecake classic milk tea, Dark chocolate, winter melon, and Okinawa. There you go. Now, guys, the question that a lot of you are probably waiting for, what is the average pricing of your product? So can you please give us a brief walkthrough on your what, what is your average pricing? Hello, Miss Razel. Hello? Hello? Miss Rado? Uh -huh. We seem to be having some technical difficulties. Guys, give me a quick second. Miss Rado, are you there? Let me message her real quick. Razel, are you there? Hello? There you go. There you go. Yes, I'm here. Okay. I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, internet connection. <laughs> but okay, so again, let's uh, proceed. What is the average price? your product so this is the question that uh, after learning of your three to four hundred per day sale a lot of people are probably wondering how much each cup costs so can you please walk us through uh, or can you please give us a quick walk through of your menu how much is your average pricing for you for artisan oh no we lost her again hello miss Rizzo hello hello Oh, there. All right. Okay. So yes. again, so again here. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Ms. Razel, please give us your average pricing yeah. for your menu. Our price ranges from our price ranges from 85 pesos to 135 pesos. 85 to 135. So yes. price range. Yes. 135. Uh, 85 to 135 so safe to assume average pricing is around 100 per cost yes okay so 100 wow so 100 pesos if you would multiply that guys let me do a quick math 
If you would multiply 100 pesos to 300, 400 cups a day, is it okay if I calculate this with our, with our, um, uh, with our uh, viewers? <laughs> Guys, let me just give you an idea how awesome. Kaya Anina, when, when, when Ms. Razel told me that they're averaging 300 to 400 cups a day, I was really surprised. No? And I've been, I told you, I've been monitoring this brand. I know it was doing well, I just didn't know it was doing this well during the ECQ. But to give you guys an idea, if we kita ba, hindi pala kita. So you just have to take my word for it. If you want, you can get your calculator. Let's go the low average. Let's go with the low average that you told us earlier. If you calculate 300 pesos or 300 pesos and multiply that to 100 pesos, that's 30,000 pesos. 30,000 pesos, which you told us earlier, that, that, that is per day. Okay, find that per day. Fifty thousand pesos in just one week for just five days, and we're talking about Sorry about that. It's amazing. I'm lost for work. I don't, I don't even know what to say. Congratulations. Let's move on to the next question, guys. Next question. Aside from milk tea, do you sell other items? Yes, we do. Uh, we have coffee, both hot and iced. We also have frappes. Sandwiches, waffles, and our pastries. Wow. Okay, so there you go. So they have their hot coffee. We ha they have their ice. They have sandwiches, waffles, and other pastries. So I'm assuming that... So that's not that's not part of of the 300 to 400 cups yet. I mean, when, when, I, when the question was asked earlier, it was the average number of cups that you sell. So you mean to say that when you told us your number, which is 300 to 400 cups, that doesn't even include the other items that you sell, like your sandwiches and, and, and waffles and other stuff. No, it doesn't include yet. Wow, so we're looking at a bigger number. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. Good job. Very, very good. I'm very happy for you. Thank you. Thank okay, you so next much. question, guys. The last question that we have from the 10 that we selected for you guys are... Or is, why is your call the Artisan and where is this located? So this was answered earlier, but since this is the last question, let's answer it again. Why was it called Artisan and where is it located? Well, Artisan Handcrafted Beverages. You know, the word Artisan comes from the word Artisan. You know, the A-R-T-I-S-A-N. Mm -hmm. It means a highly skilled worker with the use of only his bare hands. So that's what we do. No, we use only the traditional method of preparing our product. Here you go. And uh, so, I assume artisan handcrafted, everything that you sell there is handcrafted? Um, not everything, but the brewing of the tea, you know, especially the milk tea. The milk tea. Especially the milk tea. So, uh, it would, with regard to, to uh, the milk teas, all of it is handcrafted. Mm, yes. Wow, congratulations. Okay, now, so that is the very last question we have, guys. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes uh, to start sending in your questions. Uh, we still have, so that's about an hour already. We've had an hour. Thank you very much, Ms. Rezo. And now we're just going to be dedicating this time until we reach our hour and a half mark, or even if we don't, if we don't reach any other, or if we don't receive any other questions from you, uh, then I guess we can end the webinar already. For now, we are open to taking your question. And while we wait, let me just browse through some of the some of the comments that we have here. So we have from uh, Ad Magne. Good afternoon. Good luck. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. And it's a good waiting. <laughs> was earlier i'm sorry sir i didn't see your message i hope you had fun in our uh our webinar 
Earl Centillan. Hi, RP. Hi, Chef Earl. So, see, so uh, Earl Centillan, guys, he is a very good chef. I've had the pleasure of working with, with him uh, a few years back, and um, it's just a really great guy. And then, so we have a question here, pala, na kanina. How many flavors do you sell at first by Sir Raymond Villanueva? So. Ms. Ray, do you want to answer this one? How many flavors do you sell at first? I guess the question is, kapag mag ka pala, when, you are, um, when you're beginning, how many flavors should you be selling? Okay. okay. Ms. Ray, based from experience, when you started, how many flavors were you selling already? When I started um, the shop, I, I just started with five flavors. Five flavors of milk tea and five flavors of the frappes. That's it. Oh, so when you started, and uh, we have another question from Rain. For Ms. Rain, how many flavors in total would you recommend to start? So I guess this also falls into that uh, into that question. Uh, Rain, just to reiterate what uh, Ms. Razel was saying, when she started, she started out with five flavors of milk tea and five flavors of crap. Yes. Do you still remember what those flavors are? Um, I guess that's the top five that we had. <laughs> Also, ah, the, the the flavors that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, there you go, guys. If you're oh. if you're um, looking for the recipe. Excuse me. Set, um, the cheesecake comes later, except for the cheesecake. Except for the cheesecake. So, yeah. what what was uh when when you still didn't have the cheesecake? What was your original five flavors that you you began with? I started with the classic dark chocolate, um, winter melon, Okinawa. And mocha coffee, mocha coffee. And mocha. All right, there you go. Now, guys, um, in addition to that, I would just, I just want to give you advice from from um, from a business standpoint in the milky industry right now. There is what we call the top eight drinks. Okay, now this again, like what I said earlier, this does not necessarily mean that every shop you will visit in the Philippines will have this eight drinks, but these are. In a matter of speaking, safe drinks that you you can start with, okay? And they are the following. We have, and, and the basis for this, by the way, is sales, okay? Uh, number one, we have the classic milk tea. Obviously, when you have a tea shop, the first drink you're going to have would be your classic milk tea. It's, it's the very basic, just the tea, creamer, and fructose. Then, number the second, the best-selling drink of all time, it has to be winter melon. Okay, winter melon is arguably the, the best selling milky drink of all time. Third, and this is a toss coin uh, in terms of well your location and your your market, but for me I'm gonna have to say the dark chocolate milk tea. The dark chocolate milk tea, uh, especially those that the, the brand that my client uses, the one that we have in Argonza, is def is just one of those flavors that you know just would not surrender to to winter melon. It, it's the dark chocolate milk tea is one of those flavors that if you are a chocolate lover or if your place has a lot of people who love chocolate flavors, then this is a flavor that will surely bring you a lot of profit. Okay. Next we have the Kinawa drink, originally from Serenity, but now it is a it is a uh, drink that a lot of brands in the Philippines now have. Okay. Fifth is, like what I said earlier, I'm going to go with taro. Now, uh, taro is one of those flavors that people expect a tea shop to have. Okay? It's, it's just, it's just um, a flavor that uh, it's, it's really popular. There's, there's a, a big following for taro already uh, also, I mean. And it's just a flavor that people expect when you have an authentic tea shop. Okay? Next, so that's five flavors. Sixth one, I'm gonna recommend banana, the banana flavor. If you're if you're uh, a fan of Chat Time, you will notice that this is uh, one of their best sellers. They're number four or number six, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, one of the one of the biggest reasons why it's doing so well for Chat Time is because not a lot of brands carry the banana milk tea flavor. Okay, and banana, especially here in the Philippines, being a tropical country, it's one of those flavors that. Uh, it's very easy to associate with, with our background. Okay, the seventh, so the seventh and the eighth one, this is, 
this is a little bit new. Okay, so th these are the flavors, or these these are the drinks that uh, it's because of what's happening in the milk tea landscape right now. So this seventh is the cheese, uh, the the cream cheese drinks. So it's basically what used to be called a the the rock salt and cheese, but because of of uh, brands like Coco and uh, and um, what do you call it? And um, Macau Imperial, I'm sorry, um, they, they, they've been a lot of a very big following. Uh, the rebrand of the Rock Salt and Cheese name, they 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 uh, renamed it to Cream Cheese, so it's it's gained uh, a big following again. I say again because not a lot of not a lot of people realize this. Pero yung nangyayari ngayon with Macau Imperial that people are going gaga over their over their cream, cream cheese with, with one two hour time frames or, or or cube rather this has happened before okay with my favorite uh rock salt and cheese actually it's from uh happy lemon okay from uh back when happy lemon started eight nine ten years ago here in the philippines the queue of having one of waiting one to two hours just to be able to to try the rock salt and cheese uh craze originally happened with Happy Lemon. Okay, but because of what's happening now, it has reasserted itself into the best best sellers because we kind of forgot about this for a second because back then it was considered mahal. Okay, back then, uh, the rock salt and cheese was a flavor na tinitignan ng mga tao na it's a little bit too much just for a bit. But now, we it to ready. As a matter of fact, if you ask people how much a milk tea drink is, they will now tell you it's right around the same price of a Starbucks wrap, which is 120 pesos. Okay, and the next drink is the type of uh, consistency. It's it's a little bit more solid than cream cheese is what you see on top that's okay uh what you see on top well the, the cheesecake the cheesecake batter that normally you see on the side of cups okay so those are the top drinks that i recommend uh uh new tea shop consider having when they are starting okay so there you go thank you for that question Next question we have from AP again. Do you sell or do you do you use local brands of tea or milk or imported brands or global brands? Uh, this one I think I can answer this for you, Miss Razel. Yeah. Um Artisan is 100 percent pure Taiwan. Okay? That's that's amazing. That's the reason why one of the one of the reasons for their success is because they do not they do not uh in Tagalog, hindi tinitipid yung ingredient. And that's that's uh, a business concept that, that's a lot to a lot of people. Okay, so that's something na dapat marami sa itong pinapractice natin yan. You should not skimp on your, on your ingredients, what you are using. Okay, so to answer that, yes, they use local, uh, sorry, imported brands, which is, when I say imported brands, the, the, the brands that really matter are the ones from Taiwan. Okay, because there are also imported brands from from um, Thailand and from China, and I don't have anything bad to say to them. Because again, taste is preferential. It depends if your market prefers that taste. But what I can tell you is, if you are into the Taiwanese milk tea, the taste that you know, brands like Bongo, Gong Cha Cha Time, and Artisan brands like those that they have then you need to go with authentic Taiwan brands. Okay? And again, if you want to know more about that, you can send us a message through my company, or Project Printing. We'll be more than happy to walk you through the process of how you can support those, um, those uh, products. Next, we have from John Grindford. Thank you. Very promising in digits at the milky business. May the force be with us. There you go. I think John, if you may study in the tea shop or after this webinar, na talaga siyang mag-umpisa ng tea shop. 
Next, we have a follow-up question from Ms. Rain again. Did you find it difficult to find the location? Ms. Hazel, did you find it difficult to find the location? Yeah, actually, yes. Location is very important when putting up a business. Oh, okay. We have a we have a follow-up question. Can you give advice in choosing the location? Ms. Razel, you first. What advice can you give us in terms of choosing a location? Um, based on experience, it should be near the school, near uh, business establishments, so people can dine and buy your beverage during their break time. So that's the most important thing. The school, the banks, um, other business establishments. Ah, okay, there you go. So that's a really good advice. So uh, for Ms. Razel, what has worked for her is making sure that the location she chose was near schools, offices, and banks and all that stuff. So that, so that like what she said earlier, in between, in between like office work and in between school work and in between going home from going to and from school and offices, they have a big chance of capturing those those people okay in terms yeah. of uh, in terms of uh the people that they want to sell to just a follow-up um a follow-up advice on that john um in choosing a business location i talk about this in my build your own brand seminar but in choosing a business location it is very very important that you choose a business location within your route okay when i say within your route if for example i think medyo medyo uh young looking sister john so i if i'm gonna guess i think you're a student if you are a student then in that example what i mean to say is if you want to go into business now and you're looking for a location it should be within the route of your house and your um school why to make it easier for you to move around your business okay remember this guys when you have a business because yes you natin kay Razel kanina 300 400 cups a day 30 40,000 a day wow ang sarap pakinggan yes but you will only get to that number when you are already either a successful or on your way to a su being a successful brand. Now, the only way to secure that, at least the only way I know how to do that, is to make sure that you are always involved in your business. So imagine if you have a business location that is very far from, if you chose a business location that is very far from the normal route of your house. Let's say, for example, if I... Um, if I am uh, uh, for, so I'm from Makati and I'm a student, I go to school, let's say, in Quezon City, and somehow I was able to choose a business location that is in Laguna, which is nowhere near the route of Makati to Quezon City, it'll be a lot harder for me to go to Laguna, to go to those place, to that place, especially during, during um, really intense times, like, for example, exam week or or uh, when I have projects, school project, projects or whatever, and a, bis a problem suddenly arises in, in, in my uh, place of business, which is, again, in Laguna. And trust me, problems will happen. They always do during the times when you don't want to have a problem. Now, that is where choosing the location within your right route comes into play because having a business is hard, and you don't want to put additional pressure on yourself in terms of just physically showing up to your business okay so john my advice to you additional advice to what miss razel gave you which is again choosing a location that's near schools offices and and businesses choose a location that is within your normal route the route of your life okay don't choose a location that is so outside that when a problem arises you will have a hard time visiting or dropping by to solve the problem okay thank you john Let's look for another. Thanks, RP. Excellent presentation. Wow, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Next, we have another question from Joe. What's the biggest challenge you had setting up? Here you go, Ms. Razel. I think that one's for you. What is the biggest challenge you have setting up? Um, when, I, when we started this business, the the challenges that we encounter were to build your brand. Aside from the preparation itself, 
but how to market to build my 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 own brand because being so, a local here that's really very challenging and of course me i'm not that techie we don't have facebook page at that time when we started the business so it's it's really challenging wow excellent question guys Se seasoned entrepreneur question or answer sorry answer. that is an answer from a seasoned entrepreneur you guys, uh normally right, you will get questions like uh the biggest challenge is how to how to get customers how to how to sell how to get supplies but the answer that mr razel gave us is how to build her brand which is very very important guys because remember this uh, if you are successful in building your brand there you go. So going back, so why is it important to build your brand first? Because there are brands out there that just because of the brand that they built, we are easily persuaded to purchase a product from them. Okay, for example, I know people that when they want they are buying cars, they are looking for a specific brand, regardless if it's a little bit more uh, expensive than your traditional uh let's say for example i don't want to mention brands but I'm in sa <laughs> Pero the point i'm trying to make is uh, some 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 uh, people they are already confused just by knowing that the particular brand that they already trust okay so that is actually an excellent advice from an excellent entrepreneur good job miss razel there you go. So is that it? I don't think we have a on the miss. Did I miss anything? We have here. Thank you, sir. RP. Well taken. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate you for watching. Do we have any additional questions? Any, anything else? I'm just browsing through the comments if we missed anything. I don't think I did. Okay, wait, let me look at the texting community platform if we have any questions there. Oh, we have questions here, but a lot of them are the same with the ones that we already answered. Uh, here's one, here's one. When you wanted, when did you know that you wanted to expand already? That's a good question. So, like what was said earlier, Artisan already has two brands. Right? So when did you know that you already you, that you were already in a position to have another brand? Um, when when we realized that our shop, you now thank God, it was always full. There are no space for new customers to come in. That's how I um, thought about the plan of putting up another branch. Because they always ask me, oh, you should um, expand. I, I can hear a lot from customers that why don't you expand because when you go to your shop we don't have any chairs <laughs> there's no uh, space so you you mean when you saw that the demand was already uh that was already there that in your own location yeah. in that location that you're in right now people were already complaining because they yeah. wanted to go to you but there was no place to go to anymore i mean no no yeah. no uh, seat to take yes so there you go and um Around how long, let me just follow up on that one because maybe they're wondering, around how long did you get to that uh, point? Around how long did you get to a point where you said that, uh, you know, we are safe now, we need to expand to give more customer, or to give our customers more chances at being with Artisan. How long did that take you? Um, on our second year, so we hit an second. ROI during, yeah, 18 months. So on our second year, that's how I, I um, decided to put up another one. Wow, so when you got the, the ROI from your first brand, you yes. decided to use it to make another brand. Yes. Wow, there you go. Very good. That is how to do it, guys. That is how you expand slowly. 
slowly, slowly but surely. Slowly but surely, congratulations, good job. Thank you, Sir RP. Thank you very much, Grace. I appreciate you for joining us. We have here another question. Hi, hi. Any advice for regarding on how do you compete? How do you compete your brand to other brands? Okay, good question. Ms. Hazel, do you have any um tips with regard to the question of uh, Kevin Mendoza? How do you compete with other brands? Uh, for me. It, it is not in me to compete with other brands. No, what, what I do is that I just want to make sure that what we serve is really the top of the line, the best product that we have. Because out of that, whatever new products that our competitors have, when they taste it and it, it, it's bland and it doesn't taste good, they kept on coming back to us. So that, that's just our secret. Of course, um, the research and development for new products, um, I still consider that. But with the competitors, no, I don't mind that. I don't mind that. What I do is, is uh, to make sure that we serve the best and nothing but the best. You know, I myself should be patronizing my own product first. Now, I love to, to drink my own product like every day. I love it. Before I launch my product, I should be the one to, to love and patronize it and drink it every day. Very, very good. Oh, my gosh. There you go, Kevin. That's actually the best advice anybody can give you. Okay? Guys, remember this. It's not about competition. What Mr. Rizal said, that's perfect. Okay? It's not about competition. Because you think about it. Let's say, let's say in in uh, let me give you let me give you numbers. Na lang, okay. Three three hundred to four hundred uh, people or cups per day. That's big, yes. Wow. But think about it from the standpoint that how many people are in Dumaguete? Okay, let's let's say that Dumaguete only has a hundred thousand people. Okay, a hundred thousand people. If you take one percent of a hundred thousand people, that's just that's already a thousand people, guys, and that's just one percent. Okay, that's not even a big chunk of it. It's like saying ninety nine percent you're not able to reach. That's how big the market is. So you don't really have to feel the need to compete in the sense that. Uh, I have to do something to make sure that this brand fails and I, I succeed. It, 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 you can look at it in a different way. And the, one of the best ways for you to do that is just how Ms. Razel uh, described to us what she is doing. All you can really do, I mean, it's, it's really just the, the best kind of approach there is. Make sure you sell the best possible product that you can sell. And believe that people will see the value in what you are selling. Okay, do not shorten. Uh, yeah, do not short the problem of having to deal with people telling you that your product is just you know second rate, not good enough, not the best quality out there. Don't do that. Wait. Make sure you build your brand in, in such a way that people know that if I get this product from this place then I am getting the best value for my money. And that is the best advice an entrepreneur, a new entrepreneur can possibly get. Thank you very much, Ms. Razel. And there you have it, Mr. Kevin Mendoza. Thank you, Ma'am Razel and Sir RP. Thank you very much for that great Thank question. You. Thank you for that great advice. Do we have any other questions, guys, before I end the... Seminar, I'm going to give you guys the last two questions. Last two questions. If there are any, let me check again on the texting platform if we have. Guys, the reason, because I've been seeing messages, na, what's the testing, texting platform? How come we don't have access to it? Because uh, it's, it's, on a, it's on a test. It's, it's on a, ano pa lang eh? I'm, 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 what, what do you call it? In testing, okay, we're, we're not completely rolling it out yet because we're not sure if it's stable. Okay, so currently I deployed it into just some schools, the schools, and actually not the whole school, pa nga, just the, just the, you know, the, the courses that I I I've talked with or I've talked to or at whatever. So, mostly the people in our texting community platform are students. Okay, so that's why we're not rolling that out yet, but we will be soon. Okay, so it's going to be a lot easier for you to contact me soon because we're going to be coming up with the number. We're very active there. Okay, so that's nice. 
And uh, yo, let me just check that real quick. In case you're wondering, bakit hindi namin alam kung nasa inyo. Okay, so if you have any other questions, lagay nyo lang dun sa, ano, sa comments. So that when I go back here, I can read it. Or right now, let me just view the, let me just view the texting uh, platform real quick. Thank you. Ang dami namin na patunan. Wow. Ah, okay. Uh, this is a good question. Um, did you see any changes with, I'm not sure if you, uh, if this is something that you know, Ms. Razel, but this is actually a pretty good question from a business standpoint. Have you seen any changes from the demographics that ordered from you from when it was not yet on ECQ? From when we were not yet in ECQ? Are you, do, do you know the, who the people are that's ordering? Would you have access to that information? Um, so far, students still, students. Okay. Uh, so it's still the students, so it's still the, the community that built, they're still the students one. Students and the one from the call center, the call centers. Ah, uh, call centers, can, can we know what, what the name of that center is? Um, ECE, right here, just just um near our shop, and we have Teletech. Yeah, ECE oh. Teletech. Wait, one. Wow. ECE Teletech. I assume it's, um, it's uh, Siliman also. Siliman. Siliman students as well. Siliman students. So there you go, guys. Uh, that was a good question. Kasi, so if you have a if you have a way to track it, in whatever business, not just a tea shop, but if you have a way to track, okay, try and track the kind of customers that um order say on a daily basis. Because when uh, patterns change, like for example, now on during ECQ, obviously, obviously, uh, our entire pattern has been disrupted. It has changed. Uh, people are no longer going to school. A lot of offices shut. So yung mga taong binibentahan natin, we're not sure if they are still the same people na binibentahan natin. So during these kinds of uh, um, of uh, times na merong malaking behavioral shift, you can take note of the people that you are selling to. Please do. So that you know na when something similar happens, these are the sub-markets na you can go after or that you should be preparing for or should you can be expanding into okay in in miss razel's case apparently it's still the same the good thing is her brand is strong enough to withstand a crisis like this to the point na nagsaraman yung mga school nagsaraman yung mga offices the the behavior is still there so that's a very good thing that you were able to achieve congratulations on uh so so if you guys, if some of you, those who are watching, if you don't see that there are other behavioral tips that you can see, take note of those. Trust me when I tell you, they will be very helpful to you in the future. Okay, so that's uh, from a strategic standpoint. So, so may tanong. Oy. Okay, so, what are you doing with this? And so guys, actually I'm very proud to see you know, um, so Miss Razel was a product of our workshops uh, at Guanza Trading. Okay, so she, she flew all the way here to Manila just to take advantage of this. Okay, pero that's not to say that the, the success that she's experiencing is because of us. No, not at all. I'm not trying to say that. Because what she's doing, a lot of it she's doing on her own. And 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 kami na apagbigay lang kami ng advice and strategies. Kind of like what we're doing now, but still execution is key. Kung paano ko execute as an entrepreneur, it is still how everything will be judged. So what she's doing right now, that's all her. We, we may have been a part of her early journey as far as training her three years ago, but the success that she is experiencing right now, the, the brilliance of adapting into the hard situation that we are all in right now, that is all her. For that, I want to say congratulations, Ms. Razel. Thank you so much. And... Okay, last two questions. We have 
from Sir Raymond Villanueva. Okay, what are the common challenges with in the first year of businesses? So we can, or of your business rather, so we can anticipate it. Good question. So the first year of your business, during the time that you were still recuperating for your ROI, Ms. Razel, what were the, so let's go with the most challenging. What, if you can still remember, what are the most challenging problems that you had during your first year? During your first year, I think like what I said earlier, no, um, is to how to build your brand. Because when you, you already have a name and a lot of people were uh, patronizing your product, it's, it's a bit easier to reach the ROI. And aside from the, the product, the good quality that you serve, of course, I'm learning on how to, um, to build my brand on my own, like learning how to market learning how to do the Facebook. That's where after six months, that's how I started our Facebook page. Mm. So during the first year, your biggest challenge is, I'm sorry. Not because I really need to, but- Ms. Rachel, I think you I need to- found I'm sorry, I think we need to uh, go back a little bit. We kind of yes. lost you for a second. Okay. I think you need to go back. Siguro, the last, you, what the thing that you said for the past 30 seconds, kasi medyo uh, nag-freeze ka, we, we lost you for a second, and I want uh, Sir Raymond and our viewers to hear your answer. No. What happened? Miss Razel, are you still with us? Okay, so while we're waiting for her, uh, so Sir Raymond, excellent here so they can anticipate it for yourself. Uh, from what I heard before in Aputos, Miss Razel sat in is her her biggest challenges at the time was building her brand, which is simply as as a new, new um, business. For me, the, big, the biggest challenges during her first year was um, the marketing. Okay. Hello, Miss Razel, are you still with us? Ayo, na wala na nangtulu yan. Ayon. Um, well, at least patapos na rin naman tayo. Uh, unfortunately, I'm very sorry, guys, na disconnect si Ms. Razel sa atin. I think her internet gave out. <laughs> so, Sir Raymond, again, uh, based from what I heard from her earlier, no, uh, her biggest challenges were uh, marketing, uh, her brand, building her brand. Kasi when you're a new business, obviously, nandiyan yung pain ng kailangan magpakilala ka. And like what she said dun sa prior question, her strategy has been simple na, pinakikilala niya through the quality of her work. But at the same time, she had to recognize that she needs to do other stuff like um, go into uh, other forms of marketing like Facebook marketing and ganyan, which she said, bago siya na disconnect, she was able to start six months into her first year. So that was her biggest challenge kasi siguro hindi siya ganun ka maalam in terms of how to market through Facebook, but she had to learn it. So there. Okay, I hope that answers your questions. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh, we have the last question was from or is from Miss Grace Narciso. I'm sorry, Miss Grace, wala na si uh, no si uh, Miss Razel, but let me try and answer it for you. I think nowadays we can consider delivery. Yes, definitely. The numbers na si Miss Razel showed us earlier. Believe it or not, guys, that was pure delivery lang. Okay, so what she was doing is she was reaching the 300 to 400 cups a day via delivery which is again like what i said that's that's big that's that's super talaga because here in manila the only brands that i know that are able to hit that are brands na uh, at least from ano, from my experience the brands that i handle my own clients this is my basis are most of the time brands na have been in operations for about two three years and a lot of them not all of them but a lot of them are brands that are already 
pretty big brand. So for a store in Dumaguete, for a 40 square meter store in Dumaguete to be able to do that, that is elegant super. That is uh, that is incredible. Okay. So Miss Grace, yes, I think uh, you need to consider uh, delivery when you want to this kind of business. And great news, guys, she is back. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay, po. No problem. So, um, guys, that's all the time that we have for today. And uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, so, I'm trying to do this every other week, no? So, two weeks from now, I'm probably going to go out or come out with another webinar. If you guys have suggestions on the, uh, the industry or the business that you want me to look into next, please... Uh, Send it to me via this page, the RP Gonza official page, so that I can look at them for you. For now, we're going to be saying uh, very well, but before we do that, Miss Razel, do you have any uh, last words for our viewers? Um, to all the people uh, who are interested to venture in this kind of business, what I want to say is that just be passionate of what you're doing. You know, you you love what you do because if you love what you're doing, it's not it's not you're not working at all. You're not working at all. It it's not work at all. You take time to learn. You take time to be here in your business from opening until closing. It doesn't matter. Just be passionate in everything that you do. Love what you do because if you don't want to, if you don't love what you do, you you just um, want to to make your employees manage the business, then nothing will happen. Wow. What a great note to end on. So guys, in closing, in closing, let me just reiterate what Ms. Rizzo said. Love what you do. Okay? Uh, a wise man once said that if you find something that you are passionate about, if you find work that you are passionate about, then you will not work a day in your life. So That's with true. that, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Again, my name is R.P. Argonza. She is Rachel Garupa from Artisan Handcrafted Beverages in Dumaguete. Look them up. And we just want to say thank you for joining us in today's business webinar. And we look, we look to see you guys soon. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye, Ms. Rizzo. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much.